What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we are playing one of my favorite ADCs. This one is one with kind of a, a lot of flair, a lot of combos and just a heck a lot of fun to play. And that is of course Samira. This champion is absolutely amazing. Uh, she's in my opinion one of the most fun ADC additions we've had in many many years. Uh, she's a very rewarding champion to play if you become good at her, at her. She is actually one of the strongest ADCs to solo carry games, at least in my opinion. Uh, she's super good to basically follow up on her supports. She's just overall really fun. However, she does kind of fall off as we get into very, very late game compared to some other ADCs. But we'll get more into all that stuff. By the way, for those of you who are new in here, then basically this guide is only going to focus on how to play Samira in the early, mid and late game. Basically, the decision making and the macro play of playing the champion. I'll not be focusing on the combos and abilities of the champion. Instead, I've left a link for my other video down below. All right. So with that aside, there's only one thing that I would really like you guys to do, and that is, of course, to go down below and... Uh, Click that subscribe button, join into our awesome community. And if you want to see me live, then go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. I stream every single Friday. And of course, lastly, if you do enjoy this video or find it helpful in some way, then make sure to uh, to hit that like button. It actually really, really helps me out. Anyway, uh, let's just kind of get into this one. I'm going to try and do as best as I can while explaining. And I'm going to basically... The way we're going to do this guide is basically that I'll kind of use this game as an example and I'll try to explain what you want to focus on in every single part of the game. So I hope this is going to be helpful to some of you out there. Uh, so what we're playing here is that we're playing a Pike and a Samira into this uh, Kai'Sa and Yumi. And what, the, what does this actually mean for us? Well, the thing is our combo, because we're playing an aggressive support, and actually, Samira is a really, really aggressive ADC. Then we want to go for all in place, meaning that we want to go literally to try and just force a full fight that is not just poke. Because poke fights are really bad for us. We're not going to get too much from them. Oh, just want to get as much damage in here as possible. But we want to be looking for all in fights as much as possible whenever we find a good, uh, a good uh what you say basically opportunity for it as uh, samira is one of the strongest early game uh adcs out there and she's a heck a lot of fun to play basically because of this the thing with samira is that if she doesn't get a lead in early game she can kind of struggle a bit like getting going even in lane with samira is actually not really what you want to be uh striving for there's a lot of other champs that are more forgiving in terms of this where it's okay to go even but with samira it's gonna be kind of you really want to try and see if you can get that early game lead such that you can snowball it into the mid and late game uh this is of course also what we want to try and do in this game as much as possible it's right here i'm uh, i'm seeing that there's not really much we can do here so we're actually going to go for a quick back and just reset get a little three back we're going to be able to buy two times long sword which is actually going to help us quite a bit so i'm going to get this i'm going to get a control ward which is going to give us more stability in lane. I would also have liked if my support had gone with me, uh, but he'd rather stay. And I'm, I'm very happy that they haven't noticed I'm gone, because otherwise they'll just all in him, which they might do now. Okay, but yeah, basically the thing with Samira is that she is kind of hard to master, and she does take some time to basically get the hang off. In the early game, there are, as I said, basically two different types of lanes when playing her. There's the one where you have a support that is more of a sustained support. Let's say that's an army, Soraka, or something like that. And these kinds of lanes, uh, it becomes much more about going in for quick, short trades. And basically, until you can find an opportunity for an all-in. Uh, but generally speaking, I personally like the most having these very aggressive setups. Like this one with Pike or with Alona. Or something where we can really force and engage as quickly as possible and this is of course what i want to do here but this is very bad and how pike is backing okay he stopped it thankfully uh okay so we have olaf's right olaf right here on our corner uh, i don't really see the point of grabbing and using all abilities there but uh what the heck do i know <laughs> okay but things are, are actually turning down here we should be able to actually win this fight if i can get in close 
So right here should be a kill. And we're going to use our, our jump reset in order to get back on the target. And right here, we are actually going to keep trading because there's no, no point backing out from that. We are winning that fight a lot. And actually right here, I don't really want to be resetting the wave completely because I'm not sure that Kai'Sa uh, is backing. So I actually rather want to stock the lane, make sure they lose CS from this. So we're going to go ahead and just freeze this lane. And this is also going to give us a little bit of time to kind of go in detail with a few other things. So as I was saying, the more aggressive lanes, you want to be looking for these all-ins and want to try and for force the fights in the early game. Samira has an extremely good level 2 and level 3 power spike and also an extremely good level 6 power spike. So you really want to be playing around these. Uh, but yeah, personally, I enjoy playing with aggressive supports because it, it's a lot easier, uh, especially at lower elos, to basically punish people and uh, to get a head start because a lot of people don't expect the amount of damage that Samira and a support can put out in the early game. Uh, she becomes an absolute beast. Also, a thing that I just kind of want to touch on is the fact that whenever you do uh, know that you're getting a kill and you have your E off cooldown, um, then you can just use it in order to kind of reposition. And the reason for this is that every time you do get a kill, then it, your, it resets your E, which is super useful for you. So basically, let's say that we're fighting and there are junglers coming down and we're almost getting a kill here. Then I can just use my E, finish off the kill, and then I can use my next E for repositioning or holding on to that one. So this can be very useful for a number of reasons. First of all, for the positioning, but secondly, also for the extra attack speed that you do gain from this ability. All right. So let's just push this in here. Um... Right now, I don't really know exactly where their jungler is. But I can see that we are going to be looking to dive here. going to be kind of a risky dive. I'm going to be using my heal in order to hopefully finish this off. You can use my E in and out really quickly there. So right here, I, I might be in trouble. Actually, we're going to back out very, very close. All right. So as you guys can see right there, this is a perfect example of like one of the reasons why she's so good in the early game. Also for dives is basically that you can actually use your E to go under a turret if you know you're going to finish off the target. And then you can use a minion or a teammate in order to basically uh, back out again with your E because it resets after the kill. So this becomes very, very useful. All right. Right here, I actually want to go directly for... Um, I want to go directly for my Berserker Screeves. This is really going to be helping out here in the early game. But yeah, uh, one of the issues, of course, with Samira in the early game is that she has kind of a short range. And that I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with. It's like, well, she has short range, meaning that a lot of people can actually poke her as she tries to get her farm. And for this reason, it's really important to think about when you push, how much you push the wave, like... There are two two ways of handling this. If you get pushed under your tower, a lot of people, or or this basically means that the enemy will have the superior amount of time to uh, to poke you because they don't need to take care of all the minions. So the way you can handle this is actually by pushing the wave back if possible. Uh, if you push them under turret, you're going to be able to uh, to poke them as much as possible. Also, you can be using your Q whenever you have a chance in order to hit your target. This is going to give you your passive, your combos, which is basically going to give you some movement speed, making it a lot easier for you to do good trades if necessary. But again, if you can avoid trades on Samira, then, then that's generally what you want to be going for. You want to instead look for these all-ins. Um, one of the things that you want to be careful when picking Samira is that you want to be careful with picking her into like a very heavy uh, crowd, con crowd control teams. And the reason for this is that Samira kind of struggles with this. Right here should be a free kill. We are going to be able to just jump over and get this guy down as well. Very, very nice. Um... But she, of course, really, really struggles with heavy crowd control teams. And the reason for this is basically that seeing as her ult is interrupted by a stun or something, then if you're playing against a very heavy support or crowd control team, then you kind of all the time have to keep in your head 
who has used their crowd controls and who hasn't and where your position in regards to this and you still have to do that even against non-heavy crowd control teams but the, the more crowd control they have the more difficult it is uh to play samira um, and, and i'm not saying you cannot pick it pick it and you cannot do well against it i'm just saying that it does become very very difficult uh it could look like we're looking for a dive here i'm actually messing up pretty badly i am gonna be flashing out but i actually failed this super hard but that's completely my bad i should have gone in and they're also gonna literally uh smash all of them we're gonna take actually it's gonna finish almost or uh or shield bow anyway this is gonna give us kind of a moment to go over some stuff let's look in apart from this major uh screw up i basically did by going under turret first and getting a little bit of damage i actually didn't mean to uh to take that damage but whatever um, but yeah, you can use your Q to get movement speed, to get some momentum in your lane in order to basically uh, get better trades. But generally speaking with Samira, also when you are going for these all-in fights, a very, very good trick. If you're playing against an ADC or a matchup in the bot lane that doesn't do more damage if you're up close, then you actually want to be looking to get close to them. Uh, and the reason for this is that, of course, you do this extra damage uh with samira's sword when you are up close and this is this is very 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 useful we're gonna be able to actually smash them here should be able to okay we'll take that fight i slightly failed that but it's okay very nice grip there we go sweet all right so but basically uh you want to look to get up close to them if it's a, a a bot lane that does not get more damage by you being up close and the reason for this is that you do more damage when using your sword instead of your pistol you get some increased damage from the ma i mean uh, the magic bonus of it which is really really useful so only against combos of course that don't do more damage against you you don't want to be jumping into the face of uh of somebody that actually just gets increased damage as well but if you are playing against something that does not do more damage when you get up close then that's what you want to go for you want to get up close you want to get in their face to use your q but this is only in the early game this becomes a lot different as you move into the mid and late game because things change uh actually i want to be looking rengar go bot because right here we actually really really want to be looking to uh to swap lane if possible because we can kill this tower as well i don't think this guy's gonna listen doesn't appear that way okay we'll go we'll i guess we're going bot anyway um that aside let's just run back down in lane and we'll just try instead and uh, and kind of just snowball by keep killing uh, kaisa and yumi over and over again instead but i would have loved to go up here and getting this turret and getting these armor platings instead and also kind of just freeing up the rift for a jungle but that aside i'm gonna go back down into lane and in a moment we're gonna start talking a little bit about the mid to late game what we're gonna start to consider but as an adc you generally speaking of course always want to try and keep in your mind that you need to keep your gold income pretty high meaning that you don't want to be not doing something productive at all times it's very important that you constantly think about how do i earn gold am i doing something that helps our team is it working through its objectives and also with samira the thing is that she does get outscaled by quite a lot of adcs in the mid to late game or not not that much in the mid but in the late game and what this basically means is that you want to be looking uh, to close the game fairly early you don't want the game to be going on for 40 minutes plus because you know at that point things are going to start becoming really really difficult for you uh, i'm just going to actually be looking for an all in here okay that was actually a really bad choice i'm probably still going to be able to uh to kill one of them but i am going to die to this guy yeah so uh, there's no way i can take olaf i i thought he was still mid side that's completely my fault uh, and this actually puts us to, or it actually reminds me of one very important thing that I haven't mentioned, which is a rule that I just broke. And a lot of you people that have seen a lot of my videos probably know this rule, and that is when you're playing ADC, and especially something like Samira, 
you never ever ever want to be running around alone and we broke this rule pretty freaking hard here uh not only did we go alone we engaged the fight you generally speaking don't want to force a fight either the reason why i did it was because i knew i was a lot stronger than kaisa i would win that fight and i thought that their jungler was uh close to the mid lane apparently i was wrong uh i also make mistakes and this was kind of a big one but it just comes to show that it's very important to 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 always uh hold true to these rules because as an adc you don't really have any tools to uh to handle those kind of situations oh i'm gonna hurry back in here see if i can do something i should be able to turn this fight around this is definitely gonna be a free kill i could have used heal there actually but i was a little unsure whether or not i was gonna be close enough but i think i could have saved him that is a little bit of my fault to be honest anyway as we go into the mid to late game then what we want to focus on is basically what we just slightly talked about is we never want to be walking around alone walking around alone is pretty much a death sentence uh so we don't want to be doing that we always want our support to be close by or we want to try to group up with others there is of course some exceptions and that is when you're doing what i would consider to be safe plays right here a safe play is that i'm basically standing under my turret saying hey i am i'm i'm not gonna fight anybody i'm just trying to get this farm i'm gonna last it and that's it i'm just gonna make sure that i get gold um one of the other things you could do is when you don't have a wave you can go into your jungle and you can take the rapture camp or something like that we can just take the rep buff but basically doing something uh productive that's safe even though we don't have anybody here uh so right here we can just look to take the raptors then we can walk back up take uh the minions that is that are gonna hit or or uh, tower down here in a second we're just gonna make sure that we kind of optimize our gold uh right now my team is fighting and we might look to actually back this up because things are even though i don't feel like it's a fight that makes a lot of sense then i don't want them to go ahead and lose too hard or or die too many of them so i'm gonna be looking and see if there's something i can actually do to turn this around but i'm gonna be very very careful and not go for an all-in unless i see a good option for it so right here i don't see any good or good scenario where i go in and i can turn the fight around so instead i'm just gonna go back in lane i'm gonna get some gold here and right here, I think instead... Oh, this might be a really bad way to go. I'm going to have to flash here. It's going to be way too risky. I'm going to put down a ward. Which hopefully, it's going to help us out a little bit, at least for a moment. All right. So, I can't go in and get the red buff now because it's simply just not safe. And I could have avoided this whole situation by running up here instead of this way. Because right now, I actually just kind of half sacrificed or red... But yeah, the thing with Samira, especially as we come into the mid to late game, you want to, of course, as I talked about, you want to stay with your team as much as possible. And once team fighting or fighting in general skirmishes, etc. erupts, then the way you want to play Samira is a little bit different from other ADCs, yet not that different. Uh, and what I mean with this is that, first of all, in the fight, you, want, you just want to stay as safe as humanly possible. Um, and the reason for this is basically that samira oh right here we should be able to get some good damage in well i'm gonna back out they are gonna be look oh that was a painful shot i'm gonna use my heal this should be a free kill now we should actually be able to hopefully catch up some nope we won't be there we go all right the thing is with samira as you get into the mid to late game and you are getting into these fight skirmishes whatever you want to call them uh or team fights full full bone team fights and what you want to actually do is you want to first of all play the back line uh you want to stay as far back as possible hit whatever targets closest and this is the way you want to build up your combo points uh you want to stay safe and you want to secure yourself um and here comes the next question this one is the one that's hard to put a specific like uh use case on or saying well now is the point you want to go in the thing is that it's very much dependent on what you're playing against it comes down to what we talked about earlier which is basically how much crowd control does the enemy have and have they used it uh because samira's ult is insanely good literally she can 1v5 
1v9 if she uses her ult at the right time. But the thing is, the right time is only when there is no chance that she will... Oh, we're going to get dived here. All right. I'm going to look to just keep myself as safe as possible. Uh, the right time is always whenever... Uh, ooh, we can just finish this, then I'll talk. There we go. Uh, the right time on Samira in terms of her old is only when she's safe and she won't get interrupted in it instantly. Her old is super good and because of the AOE that it provides and because of you, the fact that you can actually recharge, like it has no cooldown, you just need to recharge the combo points, then this ability is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, in team fighting, and you can use it several times in a team fight if done correctly. But the thing is that whenever you do use it, uh, then first of all, you, you you lose the mobility that you do get from your combo points, which are insanely good. Um, so this basically means that your catch up abilities or or like potential to catch up to people are very very slim. It's very like she moves very slowly uh, whenever she doesn't have this on. So this is one of the things that you want to be thinking about when playing her. Like, if somebody's trying to dive you even on the back line, then using your ult in order to give them damage is most of the time a really bad idea. I'm, I'm actually overextended here. This is a really bad scenario for me. I need this echo to get up close or someone else. Right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking to get some combo points uh, on this target. Not because I want to kill him. Oh, well, I would like to if possible, but... Getting some combo points, making sure that whenever you are running away from a target, then getting combo points onto a target is extremely good because you basically get movement speed from it, allowing you to easily get away. And this is kind of what I talked about before, is if your uh, team or if your team fighting and somebody is trying to get back to you, get to your backline uh, and kill you, then using your ult is one of the worst things you can do. Unless you know for a fact it, that it will kill them and you cannot get interrupted. But otherwise, it's one of the worst things you can do. Basically, because you lose the mobility you get from having combo points. Because you sacrifice your combo points for... Uh, let's make sure we get this down. Thing is, my team might need me right here. Because they're going in for a full fight. I'm just going to hurry and kill this so we don't lose this turret. That might not be the right choice. It might be too late when I get down here. So right now, I'm going to try and find basically right here i'm gonna pull hopefully they won't have too much left but this is exactly what i mean basically going in with your old like this is super risky there's way too much stuff that could go wrong it's way too easy for them to shot you down if they haven't used all their stuff the thing is i i was too obsessed with getting the rift down instead of looking basically i should have set my character up here to attack the rift then basically look down here while i was uh, my character was out attacking and taking the rift looking what they use of their abilities who i can actually attack and where i need to position myself in order to do so um so this is one of the things that you also can keep in mind when playing her is well who has used their crop control so who can i allow to be somewhat close to you um, but generally speaking, team fighting, stay at the back line, do as much damage as you can by hitting whatever target's closest. And as soon as you can see that there's an opening for an old meaning they don't have crowd control and you're not going to get instantly one shot by, uh, I don't know, a Vigar old or something like that, then basically that's why you want to be looking to go in. Of course, you have your W as a tool in order to avoid uh, potential one shot killing blows. Uh, so that's of course something you, that you want to be, uh, whoops, we're gonna, it's right here is good a scenario of where we want to be using our Q in order to, ooh, it's gonna be a little dangerous. I'm gonna do everything I can here to just survive and stay as safe as possible. And even though I'm low here, I'm gonna try and stay close, uh, because I do have a bit of lifesteal, and if they can't reach me, I can still do damage. So that's what we're gonna keep doing. We're just gonna stay close, do our thing right there i'm not going to be able to help out if i went too close there i would also die so my entire team is dead here there's nothing i can do uh he's looking for an all in on me i'm just gonna go base all right so things are looking a little bit bad for us i'm not gonna lie this looks a really bit a little bit bad so we're gonna see if we can actually group up a bit better with our team the thing is that right now my team is also doing something that is 
a little hard to do much about in the basically at lower elos and that is they are basically or 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 side lanes or top lane or mid laner constantly uh group up either in mid or or try to fight meaning that our side lanes are pushed and we no, don't really have any any map pressure at all um and people are literally running around in the enemy jungle for some strange reason without vision of anybody so this says a lot about what's going on in this game but i'm gonna try and do my best in order to to see if we can turn this game around like we haven't reached the point yet where samira falls off she will fall off once we get into the late game meaning that it's basically around the 35 ish minute mark um so right here i know that this guy is running around in our jungle and we are going to be looking to uh hopefully pick him up but i won't be able to here because i'm actually gonna have somebody else running up to me we have clet with yomi right there so instead what we could do here is actually we can put pressure on the and basically push another wave or do something in order to create some kind of pressure but right now pre people are dying pretty much solo and Samira is, to a big extent, a team fighter. Uh, she wants to be looking for these all-in on team fights. So this, what's basically going on in this game, makes it really hard for us to to really turn things around because people are dying one on one, uh, basically by going way too far out. Right now we have our Rengar sitting, basically all the way up the side lane there. Uh, not really doing much while they're pushing our base. They might be looking right here to all in us in... Yep, that's what I thought. And I'm actually not going to be able to do anything whatsoever on it. But yeah, you can basically see right here, there is no pressure. Anyway, we're still going to try and see what we can do. We haven't fallen completely off yet. We are actually at this point still a lot stronger than their ADC because we've been able to keep our CS off. So basically... We'll try to see if we can kind of gather or team and actually play. If we can get into a 5v5, I sincerely believe that we can carry it. We can basically uh, win that fight because of our ability to take down several targets at once. As long as we kind of, uh, what do you say, analyze what we need to stay aware of. So what we need to stay aware of in the enemy team here in general is mostly... Uh, this Aatrox has uh, his knockoff with his uh, his abilities. So we don't want to be hit by the edge of that one. So we want to be looking for kind of an in right there. Also, we don't want to get hit by Kled's grab. That would also be really, really bad because that also has kind of a knockback effect. Uh, so those are the two main things that we want to be kind of trying to avoid. And then, of course, Yomi is old. Uh, but Yumi's ult hasn't been an issue so far, and I don't think it will be as long as we just play somewhat mindfully. Um, so looking at how we can actually win this one, it all just comes down to grouping up around macro plays. So right now we see Kled, Yumi, and Kaisa in bot side, meaning that we can potentially uh, shove this wave in. We see Olaf coming up here. They are going to play around Drake, so I want to try and see if we can group... Uh, for Drake, if we get all five in here, we might be able to do so. Uh, so I'm going to try and ping the Drake, see if we can get our team here. And of course, I don't want to stay as frontline. Okay, this is actually going to be really bad. He's going to use his ult most likely, which is going to put us in a really, really bad scenario. So right here, we are going to do everything we can in order to, uh, to get them down. So I'm going to be using my ult in order to hopefully use my E onto that target. Again, we are going to be able to get that guy down. Another one. And right here, I want to be trying to kite. And I don't want to be using my ult. Because if I use my ult right now, then I'm actually going to... Oh, yeah. Okay, he died too quickly. So, it's a little unsure. I'm not going to be able to take those two down. The reason why I didn't want to use my ult in this fight is basically because using my ult onto Olaf there would make me pretty immobile. And would actually make it harder for me to kill him in that scenario. Um, but seeing as my teammates died way too quickly, it kind of made, yeah, then it might have been better to just pr try and pop it off in order to optimize my damage. Uh, but I was too afraid that he was gonna, like, using my ult would allow him to get close to me and he would be able to hammer me down. But not using my ult 
gave me a lot more mobility because I have this extra movement speed from using my combo points or from not using my combo points. And this is something that you can kind of stay aware of. But as you can see, we are very, very strong and we're still able to win this game, but it is pretty difficult at this point. Uh, mostly because our team is not really organized and at this point also kind of seems like our Rengar is literally intentional feeding. Uh, but with that said, we're still going to try and do whatever we can. Oh, did that guy just lag? And I don't think I'm going to get any help here. No. Okay. Okay. No help. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to admit it. This is going to be a very hard game. I'm probably not going to be able to 100% solo win this. I definitely need my team to kind of step up a little bit in order to do so. Um, but yeah, with Samir, I hope despite even if we lose this one, that it kind of makes sense that what you really want to be looking for when playing this champion is you want to learn when to use your ult, when it's safe to do so. And this very much comes down to basically... Uh, in analyzing the enemy team and looking for uh, a point in time where they don't have their crowd control where you can go in and use your ult and hit as many people as possible or as many as is safe i hope that kind of makes sense um but yeah this i think despite actually losing this one um then i kind of feel like it most of the stuff that you should know about Tamira came across and i hope you learned the thing of two like i think samira is an amazing champion she's fun to play she's very very rewarding to play and you can literally 1v9 uh if you're like really good at her or if you kind of learn uh her kit full on and still even if you can win 1v9 you can also have games like this one where things just kind of fall apart like we had a decent early game we tried to kind of snowball it in but it also seems like we had a rengar that was kind of intentional feeding our team was kind of all over the map and this just kind of happens for all of us from time to time but yeah she has like samira has super strong follow-up on engaged support so it's really good to have a uh, support with an engage this is definitely what i prefer uh, she's really mobile she gets resets on her e whenever she kills anything and she can very easily snowball into a huge lead if you get ahead at the beginning uh and also it's very cool that her ult has no cd anyway i hope you guys kind of enjoyed this one i hope you learned a thing or two i am very sorry we lost this game but i still feel like everything came across or most of it at least did and i hope that uh you found it useful i think it was a fun game despite losing uh but also pretty often as i've said i also think you guys learn a lot from actually seeing me lose i know that sounds weird but first of all it kind of shows you another mentality of losing that actually what i perceive as a lost game is or not what i perceive but basically what i mean with it's you learn a lot more from losing a game than you do from actually winning one um so instead of looking at well oh, well, I didn't win the game, then instead think about, okay, what could I have done different or better? Maybe you played the game absolutely perfectly, but even doing so, there might be another world where if you did something differently, you would have been able to get another outcome. Uh, and then there are also games that are just pretty hard to do anything about. I feel like this game was one of the games where maybe we should play it with the team we had, how they played, the way we should have done it differently. It should, I should basically have kind of try to tell my teammates in chat to try and group them or i should try and say to my uh support yo dude we're gonna go and uh, and basically pressure the side lanes instead we have a pretty huge lead and we won't be able to contest the others anyway when things are going like this so there were options for stuff we could have done differently uh that might have ended up with another result but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did then of course make sure to smash that like button and of course uh, yeah, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so down below. Join into our awesome community. And lastly, uh, if you want to see me live, then I stream every single Friday on twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. Uh, it's super chill. You should come hang out with us. But with that said, all I've left to say is stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.